Hello, Larry, WD0AKX, and today I'm going to show you some uses for the Anderson power pole connectors. Now, these are connectors are becoming kind of a standard in the industry now, and uh, especially in ham radio, if you're in races or areas groups, emergency uh, communication disaster type groups, they're kind of standardizing on the Anderson power pole connectors for easy 12 volt connections. That way, uh, you know, if you're bringing a radio into the operation and uh, matching it up with somebody else's stuff, this is kind of a standard way to connect power to whatever equipment you have there. So I really like these connectors. I've started using them here uh, several months ago now, and I have to keep buying more because I keep finding more uses for them. But, uh, I got mine from Quicksilver Radio Products, and uh, they're on the internet. I'll, uh, um, I have nothing to do with the companies I'm talking about here, but uh, just telling you where I got mine. And there's also a place called PowerWorks.com, W-E-R-X, and they have the products too. Now I like to get these pre-molded connectors. Uh, most of the time you buy the red, they're the red and black for 12 volt power is what you want to use. And they usually come in separate pieces where you have to put them together. But I like buying the molded ones that are already together. It saves a step and you can't, can't do them backwards or anything. So I get these pre-molded ones from Quicksilver Radio Products. Now, uh, they'll work for all ranges of, of amperage from 15 to about 75 amps, I think. Uh, you can get the tongues that insert into the connectors for the different size wire and uh, different size amp ampere ratings you want to use. So I usually get the 30 amp is kind of the most common. So I get a lot of the 30 amp connectors. I have a few of the 45s around and some of the 15s also. But most of the time I find myself using the 30s. Alright, now you do want to have a good crimp tool. This is the Andy Crimp Pro crimper here. And it's really built solid and it looks like it's going to last me a lifetime. Now you can get uh, the different dies for this tool also for uh, if you want to do antenna connectors and stuff like that. I did uh, buy the uh, ultimate kit here, whatever it's called, um, where I have the extra die sets for crimping antenna connectors of all different sizes. So uh, sometimes that comes in handy if you don't have a soldering gun out in the field and need to install a, an antenna connector. So. Um, I wanted to have a few of those on hand, and I haven't used any of those yet since I got it. Um, I do have a lot of solder on type connectors too, but uh, someday I'll find a place where I need to use a crimp on. And um, the crimp, uh, crimp connectors that I've seen uh, used with these tools, I guess, uh, look pretty solid. I think uh, they'd work just fine. So I did get the kit with all the, uh, the strippers for the antenna cables and that of different sizes and and uh, wanted to try that out so that's kind of what that looks like and I got that from Quicksilver Radio Products too but you can just get the the tool and die set for the uh, Anderson power poles if that's all you're looking for but make sure you get a good uh, crimper there uh, you don't want to try crimping these with something, uh, pliers or anything like that because it's not going to work. There's a lot of videos out there already showing how to install these connectors so I'm going to just show you briefly but I'm not going to go into detail on it. Uh, you can look that up. There's a lot of videos that can explain that better than I could here with my camera set up. So I'll just show you briefly how to put those on but what I mainly am going to show you is what you can use them for. You know all the different uh, I'll give you some ideas on where you can use them and how they can come in handy for you. So what you have here, this is a molded power pole connector. The two halves are molded together. Sometimes you can buy these separately. But like I say, I like using this molded one. They're already molded together. Saves a step and can't go wrong. And what you want to do, this is the tongue. And this is the shell, so you want to insert the tongue. You'll see it kind of has a curved uh, part that's curved up on it here in the front. And this is the crimp end that you crimp. So you want to insert the tongue in this direction so that the curved part faces up. As you're looking at the red on the right and the black on the left here, you'll see on the inside of this there's already 
uh, little tabs on the inside that are silver and you want to have this snap over them so this is the direction we'll be installing that all right for example now I have this power outlet uh, kind of the cigarette lighter type uh, DC power jacks and I have, have one with some red wire red and black wire on it here and this is out of my junk box and I want to put an Anderson power pole on here so that I can use it with uh, many other connections I have this might come in handy at times so what I want to do I strip the ends already here to about the right length so that I can fit one of these uh, tongues over it and then I'll go ahead and crimp this uh, the crimp tool you'll see has uh, the different markings in the die here for uh, 45 amp 75 amp 30 amp and 15 amp connectors and like I say the ones I'm using are the 30 amp size so I want to use this 30 amp Now the crimper works very well you have to compress it all the way before it'll release so if you do that you know it crimped uh, it did a proper crimp the right compression okay I also keep some 15 amp size tongues on hand and then I've got a, a mess of 30s here but um, depends on the wire size you're doing but you'll see uh, yeah, I'll try to hold these up see there's a difference in size there depending on your wire size so let's go ahead and put this on here so I'll go ahead and slip that on the wire and if I can maneuver it on the camera here it's kind of difficult to do but I'll put that in the let me hold it a little differently here. What I like to do is kind of hold the end of it there with my fingers so it don't slip off as easy. And then put it in to the 30 amp crimp socket and push down tightly until it releases. And there we go. We should have a solid crimp there. Feels like that's going to hold good. So. All right, now that I have it crimped on the wire, remembering I want that to face up the curve, the right side red, and I'll go ahead and push it into the connector until I hear it snap. And there it snapped. It's got that nice click sound when it snaps into place, and you'll see that it's into place and it won't pull out. And we'll do the other side, the black side here. Push it in there until it clicks into place. And there you have it. Good solid connector. So there's that completed and I'll go ahead and show you some other things I use these connectors for here now. Well here's one other use. I have some banana style plugs on one end of my cable here in this case. And the power pole connector on the other and I'll show you what I use that for. I have my bench power supply in the shop. It's up on another shelf but I have it hooked into these terminals here. I want to get quick power to test something on the bench so I can connect these uh, banana plugs in there like that and then I have the power poles on the other end. So what I can connect this to any device I have on the workbench. And one of those things that I showed in one of my other videos is this Watts Up device. I can just go ahead and insert that. Now these will only connect in one in one way, one direction. You can't hook them up backwards. So you always got your red to red and black to black. So I can insert this in line with whatever I'm going to test on the bench and it'll give me uh, uh, current draw and voltage and all that uh, that I have in line here so that's uh, one handy thing. On another cable I have a barrel type uh, DC connector here this will work on several things I have around the shack but I have uh, right now my MFJ antenna analyzer here that will accept external 12 volts so I can plug that in there then I have the power co uh, connector on the other end here the Anderson power pole that I can connect into any source that I have another connector here. I can connect it into a power supply or a 12 volt battery with this connector, or whatever. So that works real good. This will also work with a frequency counter that I have. If I don't want to use the internal batteries, use them up. If I'm going to have it on for extended periods or something, I could. 
do it that way, I guess. So that's another use. So that's what that wire setup looks like. And here's something else, these large alligator clips on one end. And this would work for connecting to a 12 volt car battery and supplying power to an Anderson power pole in some kind of emergency type setup. Now you always want to be sure to fuse these somewhere in line you want to have a fuse too. So don't forget a fuse somewhere in line with your circuit. And here's a cigarette lighter mail plug that I wired to an Anderson power pole. Now you can buy these pre-made too, but uh, they're a little more expensive, so I prefer to make my own, just uh, wiring my own connectors here with uh, some wire that I have on hand. And the thing is, see, you can interchange any of the these devices, mix and match. Uh, just connect your poles together. And now I have a 12 volt jack hooked up to this barrel connector. So you can mix and match anything you want here, basically, which makes them very handy. This connector will connect up with several Motorola radius type radios kind of that trailer hitch type plug but that adapts me over over to that and here's a splitter I just uh, it's nothing fancy but I got it soldered up good to three other connectors here so I can use plug this into one power source and then power three devices that way so I just got some good 3M tape around, some good solder connections there. I could put some heat shrink over that too. And um, it would probably be a good idea in, in a cable like this to insert some fuses in each line here, which I may be doing that too here. In this case, I have a 2 meter mobile radio that I have installed the connector on the back side of the radio. Over the years, this cable on the radio became awful short from clipping it before for different things so I don't have a fuse in line right here but like I say you always want to make sure you have a fuse somewhere in line between your uh, power supply or your battery and the radio or whatever device you're operating but this is another use this would make a great portable radio especially with what I'll show you next well this is my portable power station has a built-in battery and I can charge this up so it makes a good portable 12 volt power pack and what I did of course was wire up some power poles with the a wire about that long so now you can buy you know this right here I can use to power two things off of right away you can buy uh, splitters for these power poles if you want to buy them but uh, I prefer to make my own here too nothing fancy but I just split as many wires off of the main wire from your power source as you want and I can run two devices that way. I do uh, put these on my power supplies too now and uh, most of my 12 volt radio equipment uh, will end up having these sooner or later so uh, from all my power supplies I'll have Anderson power poles so makes hooking things up easy. Now this does have the 12 volt uh, cigarette layer style jacks in it too. So I can go that route also. And the reason I was telling you before, it makes, makes a good uh, portable setup here with this two meter radio because I can just power it up here by plugging that in like that. And there I go, my display is, the light is burnt out in the dial but the radio's on here. And I do have this fused internally uh, for my wires here so so I can go on and on and show you several more things I've wired up but I think you get the point and there's mainly red and black is used for 12 volt like I'm doing here but they do have other color connectors if you want to use them for other things control lines and things like that whatever you can think of but uh, yeah I, I keep coming up with ideas all the time on uh, using these on my DC circuits uh, and adapting different connectors to whatever you want. So uh, you probably have several ideas of your own, but they make a great connector. I love them and I've been using them uh, all the time here. So like I say, I have no affiliation with any of the companies or anything like that. 
but they just make a handy connector and I'll leave it at that. So 7.3, I hope you got some use out of the video and thanks for watching. WD0AKX.